Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 5. And in this video, we're gonna learn about the properties of addition. Okay, so for the lesson objectives, we wanna learn about the identity property of zero. We wanna learn about the commutative property of addition. We wanna learn about the associative property of addition. And then also we wanna to learn to identify the parts of an addition problem. Okay, so let's begin the lesson by thinking about what addition actually is. So addition is the operation that allows us to group items together. So if we think about this in a very simple way, kind of the way that you would think about it if you're in grammar school, we have this picture here and we have three boxes and we're adding to that two more boxes. So we can just go through and count how many boxes we have. We can just say, okay, I have one, two, three boxes, right, from up here. And then I added to that two more. So then four and then five. And at this point, we all know that three plus two is five, but this just visually represents what's going on when we add. We're trying to get a total for all the amounts that we've combined together, right? I've combined this group of three boxes with this group of two boxes, and it gave me a total of five boxes. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit of vocabulary. So in an addition problem, the numbers being added together are called add-ins, okay, add-ins. And then the result of an addition operation is known as the sum, okay, the sum. So let's look at a quick problem. We wanna identify each part of the addition problems below. Okay, so we're gonna start with five plus six equals 11. And all we're gonna do is just label. So we know that the numbers being combined together or added together are called add-ins. So five and six would be add-ins. And then 11, which is the result of the addition, would be called the sum. Okay, let's look at the next one. We have 12 plus eight equals 20. So 12 and eight are the numbers being added together. Those are called add-ins. So these are the add-ins. And again, the result of the addition is called the sum. So 20 is the result of 12 plus eight. So this is the sum. Okay, so the first property we're gonna learn about today is called the identity property of zero. And it's really pretty simple. It just tells us that adding zero to any number leaves the number unchanged. Okay, so I can add zero to any number and it will remain unchanged. So let's take a look at some examples here. So five plus zero equals what? Well, adding zero to five leaves five unchanged. So five plus zero equals five. Seven plus zero equals what? Adding zero to seven leaves seven unchanged. So seven plus zero equals seven. And then 1,365,371 plus zero. Again, adding zero to anything leaves it unchanged. So it would just be 1,365,371 as the answer. Okay, the next property is also very simple. It's called the commutative property of addition. And the commutative property of addition tells us we can add numbers in any order without changing the sum. So the order that you add does not matter whatsoever. And kind of to prove this, I have some examples. So we have six plus three equals three plus six. Basically the order is changed. So six is on the left here, six is on the right over here. It doesn't matter, you're gonna get nine either way, right? If I say six plus three, what does that equal? It equals nine. If I say three plus six, what does that equal? It equals nine. So changing the order of the add-ins does not change the sum. Again, as another example, seven plus nine equals nine plus seven. So changing the order here of the add-ins does not change the sum. Seven plus nine is 16, and nine plus seven is 16 as well. And as a final example, we have 12 plus five equals five plus 12. Again, switching the order or changing the order of the add-ins does not affect the sum. 12 plus five is equal to 17. Five plus 12 is also equal to 17. Okay, so the last property we're gonna talk about today is another easy one. It's known as the associative property of addition. And the associative property of addition tells us that the addition of three or more numbers can be grouped in any order without changing the sum. 
So the way that we group numbers when we're adding does not change the sum. So let's look at some examples of this. We have three plus six here on the left and that's inside of parentheses. And then we're adding to that two and we're saying that's equal to three plus and here we have six plus two inside of parentheses on the right. Now the associate property is telling us that since we're adding the same three numbers, three plus six plus two, it doesn't matter what we put parentheses around. We're gonna get the same result. We haven't done a lesson on the order of operations yet, but the order of operations tells us that if you have operations inside of parentheses, you have to do them first. So if we were to follow that rule, we would say three plus six is nine. We would do that operation first, and then we would add two to that. So nine plus two gives me 11. So kind of the left side here gives me a result of 11. On the right, I would do six plus two first because that's inside of parentheses. Six plus two is eight, so we would have three plus eight, and that equals 11 as well. So it didn't matter that we had parentheses here on the left around three plus six, and parentheses on the right around six plus two. We got the same result either way. And that's exactly what the associative property of addition is telling us. Okay, for another example, we have seven plus five plus two, and five plus two is inside of parentheses. And this is equal to seven plus five. Now seven plus five is inside of parentheses plus two. So seven plus, and a lot of times you'll hear that people say the quantity when something's inside of parentheses. So seven plus the quantity five plus two. Five plus two is done first. Five plus two is seven. So we get seven plus seven, and that gives us 14. So the left side here is 14. What's the right side gonna be? It's gonna be 14 as well. The quantity seven plus five, seven plus five is 12. Again, we're doing that first because it's inside of parentheses and then plus two gives us 14. So again, we group this different in each case. We have five plus two inside of parentheses on the left. We have seven plus five inside of parentheses on the right, but it didn't matter, right? Because we got 14 either way. Okay, as our last example, we have 15 plus nine inside of parentheses. So the quantity 15 plus nine plus two, and this is equal to 15 plus now we have parentheses around nine plus two, so 15 plus the quantity, nine plus two. So on the left here, we start with 15 plus nine because that's in parentheses. So the quantity 15 plus nine is 24, 24. Then plus two would give me 26. On the right, I'm gonna do nine plus two first. So the quantity nine plus two is 11. So we'd have 15 plus 11, and of course that gives us 26 as well. So again, that's what the associative property of addition is telling us. We have the same three numbers being added, 15, nine, and two. We're gonna get 26 no matter how we group the addition. We can put parentheses around 15 plus nine, we can put parentheses around nine plus two, it doesn't matter. We get 26 as a result either way.